Hi everyone, I'm Gareth Spence and welcome to another episode of Tech Talk. If you've seen the industry headlines of late, you'll have noticed that Adva is making a lot of noise about its pluggable devices. The man in charge of these devices is Ross Saunders. Ross, can you start by telling us about the origin of these pluggables and, and also the division that you run, Optical Engines? Yeah, it started around eight years ago in 2014, uh, discussing with our CTO, Christoph, why don't we look at doing a little bit more vertical integration in the products, see if we can find some new applications where we can do some differentiated products and also increase a little bit of vertical content in the product so that we can get a better cost structure. So kind of started with the Micromux product, which is a, a 10 by 10 gig mux inside a QSFP28. And since then, we've just we've increased the product portfolio, both on the client side, a bunch of different uh, multiplexers inside a plug with a breakout cable, and then also on the, the line side as well. We've developed some uh, silicon electronics chips, RFICs, and more recently developing our own gearboxes and DSPs as well. Uh, build them into pl plugs that then go into our own products, and also on the, the client multiplexing products, we also sell to third party network equipment manufacturers, IP router vendors, Ethernet switch vendors as well. Okay, and how does this technology help Adva innovate? So it's really, it helps us just develop uh, products that can have a little bit lower power. So by using some key technology like single mode pixels, they consume less power than the equivalent directly modulated lasers or externally modulated lasers. So that helps to bring cost down and it also helps to do a little bit more lower footprint. So we kind of do multiplexing inside a, inside a pluggable module. So instead of deploying extra line cards, extra racks of equipment, you can turn, for example, a 100 gigabit core into a 10 by 10 gig by plugging in one of our modules with a breakout cable. And then also on the, on the line side, we're developing new technologies in silicon photonics and silicon germanium uh, bipolar transistors that, that basically drive a little bit more vertical integration, allow us to get a little bit lower cost structure. And then really on the line side, it's, it, it's more about driving cost out of the, out of the transponders. Focusing specifically on some of the products that you've announced recently, Access Wave 25 was one of the big ones. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So the Access Wave 25 is a 25 gigabit per second uh, plug. It's fully tunable over the C-band. So you can use any wavelength across the C-band. And that basically it uses a, an advanced modulation format, PAM4, with some adaptive equalizers. So the point is to try and develop a 25 gig plug that has the same kind of deployment design rules as 10 gigabit. So it's, it's has a, it can basically do a 40 kilometer reach as a high sensitivity uh, receiver, APD receiver. And yeah, that just allows us to, where customers today may deploy a, a 10 gig SFP plus into a 5G front haul or a cable, cable uh, MSO back haul. And uh, now you can do that in a 25 gig plug without changing the rest of the infrastructure. Okay, and looking at the, the portfolio of all of the pluggables, is it fair to say that you now have a device for every market segment almost? Yeah, so we have different modules for different parts of the network. So we kind of started on the, the multiplexing modules, um, increasing the, the density of, of low-speed client aggregation. And then now also with our line side technology, we're going into backbone networks, metro access networks, uh, and also with some of these new plugs, 100 gig ZR, the Access Wave 25, we're now looking at other new applications such as mobile, mobile front hall. Okay, uh, and what's next for optical engines? Where do you go from here? So we basically keep going. So we keep building out the portfolio. We have a new Micromux product called the Micromux Quattro that comes out that does a four by 100 gig and a QSF BDD, which is a 400 gig port. So it's really just, we're expanding the portfolio. We're also looking at a 1.6 terabit Micromux Terra product, which is a, a four by 400 gig or four by DR4 plus. Uh, still early days on that one. That'll be a couple of years away from product. So on that side, we just keep expanding the portfolio, keep coming up with new plugs. We also announced a four by 10 gig Bidai 40 kilometer plug. Again, for more access direct fiber application. So it's, it's kind of, we keep that portfolio going and then on the line side, we, we keep developing more silicon photonics, more RF chips, uh, 400 gig is, is a new module that we're working on right now. 
but we're also looking at, we have silicon photonics chips being taped out that will also work at 800 gigs as well. So it's really just keep, keep going on both fronts, keep expanding the team, and uh, yeah, do selective vertical integration where it makes sense, you know, where, where we can do something that's a bit differentiated from what's on the market there. So don't want to do everything. Some of it may look a little bit niche, but we, we have to build our own, you know, build our own expertise. And, and these niches like the Micromux can turn into quite a large market. So uh, yeah, just keep, keep plugging along with that. We're also looking at expanding single mode Vixel production capacity because that's a key technology for our, our multiplexing products. So there's, we're making big investments into, into that area, really just to meet the demand that's, that's already there. So it's, uh, it's partly a keep pushing on the technology, but there's also quite a big production ramp we have to go through too. That's great. Ross, thanks for the, the product update today. I appreciate it. Look forward to hearing more in the future.